Hey everybody, so I wanted to make a quick video on post-processing effects, how they work, how we can work with global versus box volumes. And since our last video was how to open up and load in these new URP sample scenes, I figured why not leverage one of those to do this with. So uh, I opened up the Oasis scene within our URP sample scenes project. Uh, if you need to take a look at how to get this open, just hop back a video and you'll see it. A couple things that I want to look at before I just start slapping uh, post-processing effects in here are what is our main camera? So it looks like our main camera is actually a Cinemachine camera. Uh, if anybody wants some tutorials on Cinemachine in the future, we can absolutely do that. Um, that'll look solid. We have a reflection probe in the middle here. We have some decals, it looks like, off to the side. Some of our trees here, that looks pretty awesome. Nice, okay. And then our water, and if memory serves, I don't think I was able to get into the water. Um, so maybe this could be a horrible idea, but why not? Uh, is I kind of want to get in the water. I don't know the easiest way to go about that would probably be to look over in this hierarchy. So we're not going to be in cameras. We're not going to be in scene setup. So we're inside of root and we're likely in the terrain, I would think. We're not looking at lighting, teleporting vegetation. And within terrain, I want to get to this collision object that's stopping me from going out into the water. So if I open this up, close cliff and find terrain prefab that has the collider built in. Then we have our collider and our second collider. Uh, unsure if it's gonna be this simple, but I'm just gonna do this and we will see what happens. Um, so for this, for the purpose of this, I just want to be able to walk out right next to this palm tree and get down in the water just a little bit. Uh, so, yeah, let's just set our collision there. We'll see how this goes. So now that I've moved the collision wall, so in theory, I'll be able to get in the water. Um, I want to do a couple of post-processing volumes. And actually, now that I say that, I'm looking over here in the tent and there's already a post-processing volume here. So this will show us a bit of what we're looking to do. So we have color adjustments, bloom, Oasis fog volume component. Cool. So all of those are a volume uh, box that we're looking at. What I want to do is create perhaps another one that is, let's go over here and do right click, volume, box volume. And we want this to come up here and we want to, I'm just gonna have this be essentially where we load in. Okay, looks pretty good to me. And then we'll come over here and edit the walls of this. So it's going to take up pretty much this whole first area. Turn off our gizmos to get a little bit easier with how we want to be moving. There we go. And let's do that and move it all down. So now if I turn gizmos back on, this will cover my camera for the first area, which is cool. So I've created the box volume. Now what we want to do to add in the post-processing effects is over inside of the volume, I can now hit new to create a new profile or I can load a profile in. But once I've done that, I can now add my overrides, go into post-processing and start to add any manner of things that I see fit. So let's do A, tone mapping, K, 
turn it to aces. Let's do, let's see if we have a saturation type control maybe. Color adjustments. Here we go, saturation. I'm gonna pull that down. So now we have no saturation, it's all black and white. And maybe I want one more thing. So let's add in film grain and we'll call this medium with some amount of intensity. Now, for those of you following along, you're probably saying, wait a second, we're adding in all of these effects. Why don't I see anything? It's because you're only going to see these effects when your player camera or your editor viewer camera is inside of the volume. So if I come into this volume, at this point we should see a tone remapping to aces, a full desaturation of our color, and the addition of a film grain to what we're looking at. So let's zoom in. I'm gonna zoom in by holding Alt and holding down right mouse click and just pulling towards myself. And now we can see those effects kick in. You can see as I start to move my camera into and out of this box, how it starts to fade in. Um, we won't get too deep into it, uh, but the idea behind a lot of that is that we have a blend distance so you can change how far out you're going to start blending into this volume and its, its uh, effects, as well as how much weight you're giving it and what priority the, the box volume takes when multiple are either nested or overlapping or otherwise. So we'll start with that. Looks kind of cool, noir, old school, black and white. And then let's do another box volume that's almost the exact opposite. Um, so I'm gonna go into volume, box volume. I may or may not have mentioned this in a previous video, but one thing that I tend to not do is leverage a box volume um, in creating a new one by duplicating because you, you tend to get some weirdness if you do that, because if you're using the same volume in both of them, then if you change one, it changes the other. And I've found for myself, at least, just to get the best practice, I always just create a new one from scratch. I don't really, don't really like trying to duplicate volumes and, and whatnot to create new ones. Okay, so we now have our starting area. We now have the secondary area that I want a new profile in, and then we're gonna add some overrides, and I'm gonna do lift gamma gain perhaps, and now let's actually make the edits with our camera inside the box so we see what's happening. And let's see, so usually, so that you can start to see a little bit of what these are doing, you have your lift, gamma, and your gain. And you can see how each one operates a little bit differently. If we take some of our settings in here and we edit them towards certain colors, so I'm gonna go with like a purple, red, blue almost, Maybe I want to take this more orange. So that's going to be kind of wild color changes over saturation. And now I'm going to add another override and override shadows, midtones, and highlights. And let's go the opposite direction. And now I can play with a few of these things. Pull the shadows down super dark, midtones down, and the highlights way up. And 
let's see if we want to add any other overrides in here. Let's leave that where it's at for now. We'll go ahead and create a another one. Um, so that, at the end of the day, just makes everything look look a shade of green. But the intention is to show you that you can do a lot of different uh, a lot of different types of controls. So here are a couple more. Uh, the last volume box that I'm going to do is over in the water, and hopefully that uh, edit of the collision box has worked. Uh, let me show you what happens if you do duplicate one of these. Is I have this now here, and let's just assume that my camera is down towards the water. Really, this should only, only affect the camera once it's underwater, something like this. But the issue is I'm now using the same profile as I had back here. So what I need to do is create a new profile altogether. If I don't do that, it's going to start to mess a lot of things up. And then if we're underwater, what do we want to do? Adjust our depth of field. And make it super, super short. Let's do a vignette so that we can also have our the sides start to kind of close in around us. Let's make it a little bit blue. Okay. So you'll probably notice that the depth of field does not appear to be working. That is because we, um, we need to be inside of play mode for depth of field to work. Uh, it's one of the only post-processing effects that way, but if you're working with depth of field and you don't see a difference inside of your volume box, that is why. Um, anything else that we wanna do? Maybe we can do a color adjustment and do a color filter of blue. Pull it a little bit cyan leaning. And now let's take a look at the three box volumes that we just did. So here's our first one. If I back all the way up, we fade out of that. Now we can fade in two. I'm going to keep moving forward. We're going to fade out. And then we're going to fade in two. I'm going to keep running forward. And we're going to fade out. And then we'll see. I have no idea if this collision uh, trick is going to work. Um, okay. And now we're in the water. So you can see it's super sloppy. It's not placed right. But the collision did work, which was nice. And now I've run off of the edge of the collision. So that did exactly what I was hoping for it to do. Let me go ahead and end play. Um, a couple other points to make before we cap this video off is in looking at a post-processing volume like this one in here. You can see that they don't all need to be wildly elaborate and obnoxious like my three were just to create an illustration of what we're doing. Some of these can be much more subtle, um, like this one that has just a slight color adjustment to brighten things up, add in some bloom, and do a few things with the fog so that we can actually see a horizon out there. Let's see, um, only other things that I wanted to cover are that we only looked at box volumes. You do have other types of volumes. Um, one of the ones that you'll use the most is likely a global volume. So let's see if there is one in here. I don't see one listed. That doesn't mean that there's not. It just doesn't have the name global. Um, but if I come in here and I create volume, global volume, it's going to create a new set of overrides that will essentially be overridden by the priority of the box volumes. So if I come in here and I do a color adjustment filter, this is just to make it obvious what's happening, and I make it red, if I hit play, you don't see that. But now when you come out, you see red because we're now in the global settings. Now we're exiting the box volume, we're gonna see red, 
And now because of the red, it's done something different with this box volume and the way that I've edited the shadows, midtones, highlights, lift gamma gain, there's likely something interacting there. So I need to make sure that I go back in and check that volume and see what edits I've done that are now operating on top of this red color correction that are causing the camera to go black. There are a lot of compounding effects that work that way as you have more and more volumes working on top of one another. I'm going to turn off my global volume. And I think that relatively sums it up. Um, remember, you can use local volumes, global volumes. Your global volume in general will override your basic project settings as we've covered in previous videos. So if you have post-processing effects applied within your project settings within the graphics tab, um, that will be your base fallback. Then you have your global volume, which will override anything that you've overridden in there. Then you have your local volumes even further than that, that will override your global volume and your project settings. So there's some post-processing uh, quick tips and tricks, a quick look at how we apply them, what types of effects you can get within them. Uh, and I hope that you learned a bit in this 15 minute ish video, like comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. I appreciate it. And have a great day, y'all.